Scottish Castle full edit workflow. I thought it was time to do a full edit again using some of the tools we've already used plus the rest of the tools that are within the panels in Luminar 4.1. The castle we're going to be editing is Aelin Donan Castle in Scotland and without further ado, let's dive right in. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a complete edit in Luminar. Just we've been using some of the tools in the previous video. To break that up, I'm going to do a full edit here and then we'll go back to the other tools that are remaining, being the portraiture and the professional. Okay, first thing for this, this is an image from Aelin Donan Castle. First thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to adjust the sky, just to give me a good base for the rest of the image. So, I'm going to jump in here and push the sky enhancer. Just to see where that takes us with the image. Next, the AI accent. And I'm liking this so far. So, I'm going to jump back into the light. So you see I did that probably back to front as well, but it just the dominance of the sky, the sky, it's just a nice sky, it's a nice moody sky for this image. So I want to see what it's going to do before I adjust everything here. I can get back in and readjust it, but I'm going to play with this here. I'm going to pull the highlights back, just to around there. Smart contrast, one of my favourite sliders. And it's just again, it's a subtle image with this. Uh, temperature I'm quite happy with just now. So I'm going to close the light. AI Enhance we've already used. I'm now going to get into AI Structure and push that. Again, you can see a subtle difference here. And with this image, it is subtleties that I'm looking for. Colour, I'll go in and check the blues. Because if I pull them back even further, it may provide more atmosphere in the image. And yep, I'm quite happy with that. I'm then going to get into the details enhancer because we've got all this seaweed around here. And that's also pushed the details in the rocks. And that is a global edit, so it affects everything within the image. But in this case, we're aiming it at the small details. Medium details. I'm going to push that quite a bit to see the effect it has. And for me, that is just too sharp. So I'm going to pull that back again. The large details I'm just going to push again. Just to around there. I don't want the image too sharp. I'm going to also push the large details. Just a bit. And then go in there. Denoise I'm not going to touch. Landscape Enhancer. Dehaze will, is a global edit. It will affect the entire image. But I'd like to see what it's going to do to this image. And that's provided me with a touch more mood, which I quite like in my images, so I'm going to leave it at that. Vignette, I'm not going to add. I now have the creative panel. I don't want to replace the sky in this, because I want this to be the original raw edit within this. This is not a composite. No sky replacement is happening here. Within the dramatic, I don't want... There's a lot of detail in this. If I push the drama in this, it might make it to HDR, so I'm not going to touch that. Mystical, I could pull it back to give me that effect, but I quite like what's happening with the sky in the original edit. So I'm not going to go on through these. I'm actually not going to use any of the creative tools for this at the moment. So next, Autumn effect. I'm going to push the Autumn effect slightly. So if I do that, you'll see the difference. And I'm quite happy with that as well. It's not too much. It's subtle enough not to affect the image. So here we have the before. And here we have where we are now. You can see a lot of detail coming in here as well. So I'm, again, I'm quite happy with that. Next thing, I'm going to get into the Pro Panel. Within the Pro Panel, I've got Advanced Contrast, Adjustable Gradient, Dodge and Burn, Colour Enhancer, and so on. Okay, I'm going to try the Adjustable Gradient just to see what it's like. 
So I'm going to set the orientation and I'm going to take the adjustable gradient up to there. Knowing that everything beyond this line here is 100%, the gradient starts from around here to about there. So I know it's going to clip the top of the castle, so we'll just see what's going to happen with this. I'm going to bring the exposure back to around there. It is clipping the top of the castle. I'm going to push the contrast. So I've got a little more detail in these clouds at the moment. I could paint that out there, or I could raise it up and just adjust it there. Take that down to there a bit. So remember with the adjustable gradient, I have a mask in place as well. So if I wanted to, because I like what's happening here, this is taking care of itself, but I like what's happening here. So what I'm going to do is edit the mask using the brush and I'm going to erase I'm going to paint a line here just so you can see the difference did you notice a subtle change there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to step backwards on my keyboard command Z and you possibly saw that filling back in I'm going to take the brush size down and I'm going to paint gently in here because I quite like what's happening behind that, but I don't want to cause any halos around the sky. I'm not going to take a lot of time for this, just for the purposes of this video. And then I'll also, I'll show you the mask as well, just to let you see. Plus, I want to see if I've caught any parts of the castle. Right, I'll just do that just now until I see the mask. Right. So, we have that there. I'll turn the mask back off. And that's the top brought down. If I turn that off, if you see the difference, turn it back on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get into the bottom and I'm going to lift the exposure in the bottom just slightly. And that I am quite happy with. So I close down the adjustable gradient. Dodge and burn for me. Start painting. And we've covered dodge and burn in previous videos. So you know I'm going to use lighting, I'm going to take the strength of my brush right down to around, I'm going to go for about 8 here and I'm going to take the brush size down ever so slightly and I'll do that with the square brackets and the keyboard and I'm just going to what I would call dust. So dust that in, dust in here and I could take my time for this but what I'm going to do is just paint ever so slightly just to emphasize areas and you'll see ah, again I'm being very liberal with this That's just to take and emphasize certain areas if I leave it like that you're always drawn to this and then you see the castle I want a nice complement so I'm going to paint through the image and I'm going to add other areas just in there lead us through here and as I say I am being very liberal with my painting but just to show you how to enhance the images here take that down through there through there because I want to send the eye up here and we're always drawn to the lightest areas and although the front areas are very light hopefully that's going to draw our eye through the image towards the castle I'm not going to create or paint anywhere in this where there isn't already some light. And just there and there, just to catch your eye. And just to complement the rest of the image. We can overdo this, but the overall amount we can pull back. So I am aware of that when I'm painting. So what I'm watching is I don't overdo it. Knowing that I can go up and hit the erase button and paint out any areas that I don't want to do. But I'm just looking for subtlety. So that's us. We're nearly done with this. Because I'm quite happy how the image has progressed so far. But in there. Another piece down there. Do I want to highlight that? I'll give it a go and with this what I'm going to do is click at the start, go to the end, I'm holding down shift and click. 
and now we'll go back to there while still holding down shift and click and then do the same from here to there and back again because I'm painting subtly here and has that balanced out the image? for me yes in terms of the light I don't see anything too much that is pulling my eye directly in and then not letting me look around the image so I'm quite happy with this one and if I click done here show you the before and the after and this is at the stage that's what I really like about women are this before and after because it's now you can see how much change you've made in a relatively short time but also if something is catching your eye it's quite a flick book to see if something is catching your eye and for me this area here is catching my eye so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and go start painting and I'm on white and I'm at 8% but I'm going to click erase and I'm going to take that back out and there we go I'm not drawn into that as much I'm going to take that one back out as well that there is a nice balance if I go to lighten I'm at 8% I'm going to take that down even further I'm going to half that and I'm just going to paint in a couple of the small areas I remember that that area there caught too much light for the this image for me so I'm just going to tweak it and this again is subtlety in the image subtlety within an image should provide balance within the image and I'm going to just enhance this here and I know I've already done these areas I'm just looking through is that area too much? let's see that area was too much that's a nicer balance for me now I need to get back in and lighten because of the size of my brush I had areas here and remember contrast is lovely to see in images like this hopefully you enjoyed that video and if you're new to Luminar hopefully it gave you an insight into how some of the tools affect your images uh, if you're already established user of Luminar 4 hopefully you picked up some pointers within that I don't think there was many at all but it gives you a little insight into again workflow and how different photographers look at their images you'll notice I completely and utterly avoided the sky replacement in that one because it didn't need the sky replaced I worked with the raw image that was there uh, for this my workflow as I've said previously is I open the raw image in Adobe Camera Raw which opens it into Photoshop from Photoshop without any adjustments I take it straight into Luminar that's just my workflow that could have been done as a standalone editor but it's just I'm now comfortable doing it that way so I don't see any need or reason for me to change it but what I did there with that edit can be done standalone just using Luminar you do not have to have Photoshop or use Luminar as a plugin for that and the next video on the channel will be the professional tools and then we will which is a little bit out of sync in the order that you see them on and then we will go into the portrait tools so hopefully you enjoyed that video and if you'd like to check out some more videos below on the channel and consider subscribing that would be absolutely fantastic thanks again for watching